Hey guys, it's Adrian from VHA here, bringing you a new video. So the great folks over at Zoos sent me over some more gear. This time they sent me a Zoos combo or double switch. It's the Zen 30 model. Pretty sweet. It's great for when you want to be able to have a dimmer for controlling your lights, and then maybe use that second button to control a fan. That's my setup that we're going to try here today. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, this thing is available uh, on the Smartest House website, as well as Amazon, for about 35 bucks. Which, for a Z-Wave combo switch like this, that's pretty awesome. All the other Zoos products that I've ever used have worked flawlessly with Z-Wave, and even integrated very well in smart things with uh, custom device handlers. We're going to get this thing up and going and see what all we can do with it. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So of course for starters we're going to uh, unbox the device. Once we do that then we'll go ahead and get this thing installed in the wall. I'll kind of show you how I'm going to set that up. Once we do that we're going to add it into SmartThings. We'll go through uh, adding it and doing a little bit of configuration or at least showing you what all you can configure uh, in SmartThings. Then we're going to add it into Home Assistant. And lastly, I'm going to show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. As you can see, it's the Zoos double switch. This is the Zen 30 model. Seventy five watts max on the dimmable LED. 250 watt max on the incandescent lights. This will not work in a three-way setup uh, unless you have some sort of virtual uh, three-way switch setup. This will also require a neutral wire, so you will need that third wire. In the box, you'll get the instructions, basically giving you the different options of how to wire this thing into your uh, wall box, as well as how to add it into uh, the various Z-Wave hubs. You also get wire nuts for everything as well. And with all the wires hanging directly off of the switch, it makes it very easy to set this thing up. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step and get this thing installed in the wall. All right, so just to kind of give you a rundown of where I'm going to install this in the wall, uh, I'm basically going to put it in my daughter's room. Now, I don't know if you saw a few videos back, I installed a Moe's Wi-Fi in-wall switch, but I decided that I like this setup better. My plan is, on one side I'm going to have this combo switch, which will control the light and the fan, and on the other side of the box I'm going to have a, another switch controlled by that Moe's switch that we were talking about earlier, and it's going to turn my uh, daughter's LED light strip on and off. So kind of cool. Give her a little extra setup there. She'll be able to control the uh, LED lights from one switch, and then of course the fan and the light on the other switch. All right, so I've kind of got everything wired back in there. I powered it back on to make sure everything looks like it was going to work okay. And as you can see on the far side there, that little Mohs uh, in-wall uh, dimmable switch there is kind of tucked in the side, but everything for the most part fits uh, in there pretty good. So I think we're good to go. We're ready to go ahead and put that wall plate back on. All right, so I got the wall plate back on. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, everything has power and is controlled as it should. So I think we are ready to get this thing added into smart things. So let's go ahead and jump on to that next step. All right, so we will need to get uh, a custom device handler set up in SmartThings for this to work properly. 
this will allow us to configure all the different custom settings and stuff that are associated with this switch. And I'll have all the links for this in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it and check these out yourself. We're basically going to copy the code for the device handler here, and then we're going to jump over to the SmartThings IDE, and we'll create a custom device handler and paste this in there. So we'll click on Create New Device Handler, and then we'll say From Code. We'll go ahead and paste this there. We'll need to save it, and then, of course, publish it so that it'll be functional uh, within our home setup. In order to get this thing into pairing mode, we need to hit that dimmer switch three times. You'll see the light starts flashing, and then you'll know it's in pairing mode, and smart things should pick it up almost immediately. Once it does, you can go ahead and give it a name, whatever you want to name it, and it will create uh, two entries in smart things one for the relay button at the bottom, and then one for the dimmable light switch. Then we're good to go. Let's go ahead and look at the settings and see what there is there uh, just to kind of show you the different available features that you have there because there's tons of different things that you can do uh, within the advanced settings there. You can even change the uh, LEDs on the side so that they are on whenever the light is on or off when the light is on depending on how you want to do it. You can kind of set it whatever direction you want. There's also like four different colors so the default they're set to white. Uh, but you can also have the LEDs set to red, blue, or green as well. So that's kind of cool. Basically, uh, go through there, look at all the different options that there are. Once you uh, make the changes that you want, you'll go ahead and save it. And then also make sure that you hit sync down here so that you can sync the new changes to the device itself. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step and get this thing added into Home Assistant. All right, so uh, of course, using the SmartThings integration in Home Assistant makes it super easy. So there's not a whole lot that we have to do. In fact, if you wait long enough, it'll probably show up automatically. I'm impatient. So we're gonna go ahead and restart Home Assistant for, uh, for it to pick up the new changes and re-pull our SmartThings hub to pull in the new devices. Once Home Assistant comes back up, we should be able to go into our SmartThings integration and the new devices should be there. Strangely enough, they came up, and even though it already changed the name in SmartThings, the names were still set to the old names uh, in Home Assistant. Not really sure where that got cached. Nonetheless, not a big issue. We can change it in Home Assistant so that it will correlate and all be the same uh, however we want to set it. Let's go ahead and move over to the last step and see it in action. All right, so as you can see in the top corner, I got the fan going, so you got a little video of that fan there. And on the bottom, I had the switches from Home Assistant, which is the, uh, on the left side there is the fan and the right is the uh, light. And we're just going to kind of turn things on and off and just show you uh, how quickly they respond. It's pretty responsive. Uh, not much of a delay there. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, it works about as good as could be expected. So I was pretty pleased with the setup. And I think my daughter's going to love it. So we can dim the lights down just a little bit. And you can see the lights go down. We can move them back up uh, more towards uh, 100%. And you can see the lights come back on. So everything is pretty responsive and looking pretty good. So I'm happy with it. That's pretty much the end of the video, guys. This was a pretty easy setup overall. I really love the way Zoos sends their devices out. They're super easy to install. And using the wire nuts to wire everything up makes it really easy. The ability to use the uh, wire nuts to wire everything up makes the install super easy. Thanks a lot, Zoos. I'm always excited to get new gear from Zoos because I love their Z-Wave products. By far the best Z-Wave products that I've seen around.
So if you haven't ever been over to Zoo's website, definitely look in the description below and check out their website. You also want to check out the Smartest House because not only do they carry all Zoo's products, but they carry tons of other stuff as well. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So of course, for starters, we unboxed the device. Once we did that, we installed the device on the wall. Then we went through and added it into Smart Things and how we had to set that up. We went through and added it into Home Assistant. And lastly, I showed you what that looks like in action. That's the end of the video, guys. Again, if you haven't checked out Zoo's website, jump over there and check out all the stuff they have to offer, especially if you like Z-Wave gear, because in my opinion, they're the best Z-Wave products around. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, jump over to my Teespring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.